We're here to look behind the curtain. Pay no attention to that man behind the curtain. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 facts about The Wizard of Oz that will ruin your childhood. For this list, we're taking a look at some upsetting, disturbing, and myth-deflating facts about L. Frank Baum's famous children's novel, its iconic 1939 film adaptation, and the film's stars. Number 10. Dorothy was named after the author's niece, who died in infancy. L. Frank was a storyteller, and he loved children. And he used to tell bedtime stories to the kids. They would gather around him to hear the stories. As noted, The Wizard of Oz is an adaptation of the similarly named The Wonderful Wizard of Oz, a novel from 1900 which spawned a host of sequels. Written by L. Frank Baum, it's widely considered to be a classic of 20th century children's literature. While writing the novel, Baum and his wife would frequently visit their infant niece, Dorothy Louise Gage. Sadly, Dorothy passed away when she was just five months old. To honor his deceased niece and ease the family suffering, Baum decided to name the lead character of his upcoming novel after her. I'm not a witch at all. I'm Dorothy Gale from Kansas. The rest, as they say, is history. Number 9. The Cowardly Lion costume was a little too real. Put him up, put him up! Which one are you faced? I fight you both together if you want. I fight you with one poor tie behind my back. If upon viewing The Wizard of Oz, you felt that Burt Lars Cowardly Lion costume looked a little too, well, legit, you're about to find out why. It turns out that the famous costume was made from actual lion skin and fur. If I were king of the forest, not queen, not duke, not prince. Donning a costume of such materials is already intense enough, but don't forget, Lar was dancing throughout much of the film. We don't know about you, but dancing while wearing a dead Jungle King skin and fur doesn't sound like our ideal gig. I hope my strength holds out. I hope your tail holds out. Then again, we might be wrong, seeing as how the costume sold for $3 million at auction in 2014. Number 8. The snow in the poppy field scene was actually asbestos. And now, my beauty, something with poison in it, I think. With poison in it but attractive to the eye and soothing to the smell. <laughs> One of old Hollywood's most infamous tricks was using asbestos as a substitute for snow. The illusion was pulled in many flicks back in the day, though none as famous as The Wizard of Oz. The cancer-causing material was ideally suited to serve as a stand-in for snow, as it was fireproof and looked just like the real thing. So where does it pop up in Oz? Why, the poppy field scene, of course. <laughs> The scene may have appeared magical, but filming it was anything but. Whether or not any of the actors suffered due to their participation in the scene remains a mystery. But let's just say we're happy this Hollywood trick is no longer in practice. Unusual weather we're having, ain't it? <laughs> <laughs> Number 7. The original Tin Man was replaced due to a severe allergic reaction. Jack Haley's road to becoming the iconic Tin Man was fraught with drama and even a life-threatening allergic reaction. However, none of it involved him. And I was standing over there rusting for the longest time. You see, Buddy Epson and Ray Bolger were originally cast as the Scarecrow and Tin Man, respectively. However, Bolger had always dreamt of playing the Scarecrow, and after much fuss, he convinced the producers to let him and Epson switch roles. Then they took my chest out and they threw it over there. Well, and that's you all over. <laughs> now the Tin Man, Epson went in for a costume test. Unfortunately, he had a severe allergic reaction to the character's aluminum makeup and was subsequently hospitalized. Now I know I've got a heart because it's breaking. Upon witnessing the seriousness of his condition, it was decided that Epson would be replaced. Enter Jack Haley, the man we all know today as the Tin Man. Number 6. Judy Garland was forced to lose weight. As you will soon learn, Judy Garland's time shooting The Wizard of Oz was anything but a trip over the rainbow. Some place where there isn't any trouble. Do you suppose there is such a place, Toto? First, she endured horrific comments from MGM executives, with some, including studio head Louis B. Mayer, referring to her as a fat little pig with pigtails. But some people without brains do an awful lot of talking, don't they? Yes, I guess you're right. To solve their problem, they put Garland on a strict diet. 
To help her lose weight, Mayer insisted that she was only allowed to have chicken soup, black coffee, and cigarettes. So much for the glitz and glamour of old Hollywood. This was the yellow brick road to misery. Ouch! What do you think you're doing? We've been walking a long ways and I was hungry and... Garland wasn't the only one on a diet during filming, as the toxicity of Margaret Hamilton's green makeup meant she could only ingest liquids. Number 5. Margaret Hamilton suffered a horrific injury while filming. Well, my little pretty, I can cause accidents too. Speaking of the Wicked Witch of the West, Margaret Hamilton's onset suffering was not limited to her liquid diet. I'm melting! Melting! Oh, what a world! What a world! During the scene in which her character disappears amidst a cloud of smoke and fire, the elevator meant to transport Hamilton below set malfunctioned, trapping the actress close to the pyrotechnics display. I'll get you, my pretty, and your little dog, too. <laughs> this caused her to suffer terrible burns on her skin and face, with the cameras continuing to roll. As such, no more takes were shot, with the director opting to go with the original rehearsal shot that didn't involve bodily harm. Ironically enough, Hamilton's stunt double Betty Danko also endured a brutal onset injury when the pipe beneath her broomstick exploded, sending her hurtling into the air and causing a two-inch deep wound to her leg. Number 4. Judy Garland was slapped by director Victor Fleming. During the Cowardly Lion's big entrance, Judy Garland simply could not stop laughing. <laughs> The giggling was so persistent that director Victor Fleming took drastic measures to make her stop. The renowned director, who helmed dozens of flicks including the seminal 1939 film Gone with the Wind, took Garland aside, slapped her on the cheek, and quipped, Now go in there and work. Shame on you! <laughs> what did you do that for? I didn't buy them! Afterward, Fleming apparently felt so bad that he told the crew to punch him in the face, as punishment for his boorish behavior. Instead, Garland planted a kiss on his nose. Man, Hollywood was weird back in the 30s. <laughs> My goodness, what a fuss you're making! <laughs> well, naturally when you go around picking on things weaker than you are. Number 3. Judy Garland became addicted to pep pills during filming. Garland's addiction struggles with drugs and alcohol have been well documented, and it's no secret that her addiction to amphetamines began while she was filming The Wizard of Oz. Incredibly, the pills were often provided by her own mother, who felt that they would help boost her performance. She was chemically trained as a kid to take a pill to go to sleep and take a pill to wake up and go to work. Of course, it wasn't just Mommy Dearest leading Garland down a dark path. The studio wanted her on amphetamines to, as noted earlier, lose weight, and also the actress later remarked that the studio would knock her and co-star Mickey Rooney, quote, out with sleeping pills. Then after four hours, they'd wake us up and give us the pep pills again so we could work 72 hours in a row. This was a real, truly live place. And I remember that some of it wasn't very nice. Number two, some munchkins were out of control. It's all right. You may all come out and thank her. Come out, come out, wherever you are. If this entry doesn't destroy your rose-colored glasses, we don't know what will. According to Garland's ex-husband, some of the male actors playing munchkins would regularly show up to the set hungover and would act in a disorderly and extremely unprofessional manner, tormenting Judy Garland. Got to verify if legally to see, to see if, she if she is morally, ethically, spiritually, physically. Her ex-husband even claimed that on at least one occasion they tried to put their hands up her skirt. Indeed, many of the Munchkin actors would spend their post-work shifts drinking in nearby bars, only to then wind up in jail. However, because they were essential to one of the film's most important scenes, the studio continued to bail them out. It got so bad that the studio had to assign someone just to watch over them. <laughs> Though my childhood is ruined, I still love watching The Wizard of Oz. Anyway, here are some other behind-the-scenes facts that'll be hard to get out of your head next time you watch it. These are yours of a different color you've had tell about. <laughs> it's too late. There they are, and there they'll stay. Give me back my slippers. I'm the only one that knows how to use them. Toto, I've 
feeling we're not in Kansas anymore. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Annie M. Actress Clara Blandick Committed Suicide What's all this jabberwopping when there's work to be done? I know three shiftless farmhands that'll be out of a job before they know it. In her post-Wizard of Oz life, Clara Blandick's health eventually slowly declined. Dorothy! Where are you? It's me! It's Annie M! We're trying to find you! Where are you? By the early 60s, she was in her 80s and suffering from a number of ailments and chose to commit suicide rather than die a slow, painful death. On April 15, 1962, she arranged her room to reflect her personal and professional accomplishments, got dressed up in her best gown, and proceeded to overdose on sleeping pills and asphyxiated herself. She left behind a note that read, quote, I am now about to make the great adventure. I cannot endure this agonizing pain any longer. It's all over my body. Neither can I face the impending blindness. I pray the Lord my soul to take. Amen. Dorothy, dear, it's Aunt Em, darling. Oh, Aunt Em. <laughs> It's you! Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.